right, guys, this video has been a long time coming. A lot of you have uh, asked me to cover these. This is the Masterlock 1500 ID and comes on one of these packages. They call it the speed dial. A couple of interesting things about this lock. For once, I think Masterlock was really honest in their evaluation of the security rating. This is a less than $7 lock. And they rated it five, and I think that's probably the perfect rating. This thing's intended to lock up school lockers or gym lockers, things like that. Nothing high security. And I think you're going to see that they give us a lot of engineering for about seven bucks. Pretty cool. Um, they also say it's anti-shim. And now there are a lot of videos on YouTube showing how to shim these. And I'm going to show you how these are not shimmable and how those videos are all fake. Um, the combination on this is changeable, and we'll talk a little bit about that. I'm going to tell you right up front, I have, in more than a year of looking at these, I've discovered no possible way to bypass them or to, to hack them in any way. There are a couple of tips on picking. We're going to talk about math. Uh, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff. And unfortunately, a lot of it's going to be words. Um, this, is, this is how they work. Um, there are four different directions you can push this this slider on to get inside of here. Now, the first thing is you notice that they give you some something called a combination, but you should know these are not combination locks. And I, I know this is math stuff, and I know it's probably not that interesting, but uh, these are engineering choices that Master Lock made. So I'm briefly going to cover these. All right, these are not combinations. Here's why. Uh, because in combinations, the sequence does not matter. So, and a good example of that is a combination salad. I got a salad... It's got lettuce, tomatoes, and cucumbers. And my salad also has tomatoes, cucumbers, and lettuce. And it's also got cucumbers, lettuce, and tomato. The point is, it's the same salad. No matter how I order the three contents, it's the same salad. These are actually permutation locks. And again, this is a, a choice. Master has decided that we have four different directions to choose from, and we have to do it in a very specific order. Now, they could have chosen the easy path, and quite honestly, I would have expected that from Master Lock, but they didn't do it, surprisingly. In permutations, there are two possible choices. The first is no repetition permutation, which means if I have four directions, I can only use each of these directions one time. Now, I can do it in any sequence, but I can only use each of them one time. Well, if you do the math, that tells you that this lock would only have 24 possible solutions, and if I estimate that each solution takes about five seconds to try it and clear the lock and try the next one, five seconds times 24, it takes two minutes or less to pick through all 24 choices. Instead, Master Lock chose to make these a little bit more complex. As I'll show you in just a minute, I've cut one open. They've chosen to let us use repetition. And you can see that this is the factory combination. So let's try it. So let's clear the lock. And we go up, up, down, up, and now we get an open. Now you can see uh, we have four directions to choose from. I really only used two directions. I used down one time, and I used up three times. So this is clearly a repetition permutation lock. Again, the mechanism, when I open it up and take a look, that will reflect that because it's much more complex. That means there's 256 possible solutions to get in here. Five seconds each, 1,280 seconds, 21 minutes or less to choose the, rec the correct sequence to pick my way into that. 256 versus 24, that's more than a tenfold increase in possible combinations to, or permutations to get into the lock. Really, really impressive. Now we come to the first weakness. All right, when you take a look at the package on these, you flip it over and it says here somewhere, here we go, Easy to reset. Any passcode, and, and here's the weakness, any length. Human nature being what it is, if I'm allowed to mess around with the combination, and it's easy to do by moving, just by moving that lever, you can change the combination. I want to get in my locker quickly. I'm lazy. I'm not security conscious. I really don't really put a lot of thought into the security of my books or my gym clothes. So I want to get in there quick. So we'll clear it. You can see it's locked. I walk up to my locker, flip it in one direction, and I get in. Any passcode, any length. And that includes a did one direction. Well, not such a great security measure. 
not such a great security measure. If I have a, a two directions, I've got a one in 16 chance. In this case, it's even less than that. So a human nature allowed me basically to defeat a very complex security system that Masterlock put together for me. Surveys have shown that most people choose two. They choose two directions. So if it's two directions, that means I got a one in 16th chance. Well, there's another, uh, another shortcoming on this lock, and I call that the ergonomics. Let's say, and I am, I'm right-handed. My strong hand is going to be the one I'm going to walk up, I'm going to grab a hold of my locker, and I'm going to start messing around with the, with the uh, manipulator here. What's comfortable for you when you grab it with your right hand? If I push it in that direction, that's comfortable. If I push it in that direction, that's, that's comfortable. That's kind of comfortable. But when I got to slide my finger all the way over there and pull backwards, that's not comfortable. So if I'm allowed to set my own combination, I'm probably going to set it to one of those three positions. If I uh, stay with the crowd and I choose two, that means I've got a one in nine chance of picking through this if I don't know the combination. If I'm left-handed, it's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to, uh, again, up, down, but instead of to the right, I'm going to push it to the right side. So there you go. Those are a couple of tips on how to get into these very quickly. The weaknesses on this are, are not the design by Master Lock, but it's how the user will employ it. They're going to choose a very low number of solutions, in other words, one or possibly two. If they stick with the crowd and ergonomics being what it is, they're going to choose the directions that are most comfortable for their hand. There are a couple more things about these locks. Let's take a look. Well, they're held together with three screws. These two are, are triangular head screws, so it's a security screwdriver. I don't happen to have one, but if you do, you can unscrew those. They're not even locked tight in and pull them right out. The center one's a little bit harder. It is also a security screw. Um, it's intended to be screwed in, but I think you can see down in there it's rounded off, so you can't really back it out very easily. You could get a chisel. You could probably deepen that cut and fit a screwdriver and eventually get it out. But again, these are pretty low security locks. But I didn't do that. I went ahead and took a quarter inch drill, drilled that screw out. And I didn't have that screwdriver. So I took my Dremel tool and just cut down the side because I wanted to see what was inside of here. I wanted to see if there were any design defects. So once you've got all that done, you can simply open this up kind of like a clamshell. And on the bottom, there's a little hook right there, and it hooks directly under that, and then the top comes off. That Phillips screw fits down inside of that hole in the center, and it allows you to manipulate your lock. How does it work? Well, it's the same combination. So I'm going to go up, up, down, up. Now, I don't want to pull on this because everything will come out. I'm going to push it with my finger a little bit, but that's the locking bar. So I'm going to slide him over, and then you can pull... Hopefully things don't spring out, but then you can pull your shackle out. Now, when you take a look at this, you'll notice that on this locking bar, this is a large round hole, and this is a smaller cutout on the side. That smaller cutout is what gets caught along this shackle. It's very sharp there. So if that's in place, and we slide that in there, you might say, well, I'm gonna, I can take a shim, and I can slide him down inside of there. Let me grab a shim here. And what you'll see very quickly is that commercial shims, and this one's all bent to heck, but you can see that it, it won't quite reach down inside of there. And even if it did, you might say, well, I just saw it, Bill. That's spring-loaded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole right there. I'm going to take my probe. I'm going to shove it in there, and I'm going to push that thing over. Well, now that I've locked it, you'll notice that that doesn't want to slide. It is not spring-loaded. Now, I'm not going to explain this complex mechanism. There are just too many other guys out there. In fact, I'll put a link. Chris Ahrens made an excellent video about how there's four different locking wheels in here, four different locking paws down on the side of there, and all of them block this locking bar and can and prevent it from moving. He did a super job of explaining how all that stuff works together. But the point is, there are four locking bars that must be in a perfect position in order for this to be unlocked. So it's just not going to happen, guys. You are not going to shim it. A lot of videos show you sliding it down there with a piece of paper, shimming this. Those are all fake, every one of them. Likewise, there's a couple of videos showing where you can push down on this shackle and then very gently pull up. 
those also are fake videos. It's simply a physical impossibility for that to happen, given this lock design. So, like I said, for seven bucks, we got a lot of technology, a lot of complexity here. These are just, it's a great design. Now, are there some weaknesses? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's take a look. First of all, well, first of all, we got a visual indicator. If you flip over the lock and you notice that the tape is intact and nobody has reprogrammed this, that means it's got the same factory combination, whatever it is. Well, in that case, you know that it's going to be four different directions and it could be in any direction. So ergonomics is not going to enter into it. In order to get into an untampered with lock, you're going to have to try at least 256 different combinations in order to get into it. If you find a lock that has been tampered with, there's a very good chance that there are only two digits. So again, one and nine with the right hand, one and nine with the left hand, and chances are you're going to get into that lock. When you take a look at the inside of the lock, there are also some weaknesses. Now, the body on these is cast aluminum, which is pretty high melting temperature. Not super high, but we could melt it. But there are things inside of here that melt at lower temperatures and things that are in direct contact with the outer case. For example, the entire mechanism in here, all the locking wheels, everything is plastic or nylon, which has a very low melting point. Likewise, this locking bar and the locking pawls that lock, the four of them that lock into the locking wheels all around the perimeter of this, they're also zinc as well. So very low melting point there. So while I haven't been able to figure out my way to hack into these things, um, I think it. I think it's time to have a little bit of fun. I got 500,000 BTU, uh, BTUs out in the garage. I'm going to grab that thing and let's take this little guy out in the back. It's not a practical attack. It's just a fun attack. And let's see if we can burn our way in. Maybe we can melt all this plastic and zinc. It'll all turn into a pool of sludge in the bottom of the lock and it'll just fall open. Let's give it a shot. All right, guys, got a brand new master lock. It has not been tampered with. And I got the torch running in the background. Let's see if we can get this thing to happen. 500,000 BTU. Three, two, one. worked out pretty well. <laughs> All right, not much can stand up to that. Absolutely not a practical attack. Can you imagine doing that indoors on a gym locker or somebody's school locker? Just not practical, but it sure was fun. All right, I got one more thing. Let's try it. All right, guys, I'm not, I have another attack that's plausible that several of you have sent in. This is called freeze spray. It's actually for lowering the temperature of electronic components for testing. And according to the can, this gets down to minus 65 degrees Fahrenheit. So five bucks for a can of this stuff. And the idea is that I'm going to try to inject it down in here. Maybe we can fill the body up with this frozen liquid, which will change the uh, characteristics of the plastic and I'm going to turn around backwards so you can see what I'm doing of the plastic and maybe even the metal and then I'm going to strike it I got a small brass hammer I'm just going to give it a whack after I empty the can into it so let's see 
how well it does here. Might be a cool way to chill some adult beverages, I can say that. It's not the whole can, but it's close enough. That thing is about ready to go, I think. I'm going to give it a little whack, see what happens. Nothing. There we go, it's open. So I don't know what we affected in there but probably pieces of that plastic and this thing is coated with frost now this thing is still steaming from from being chilled that stuff works pretty good it was nice and quiet and pretty effective i didn't think it was going to work but for those of you who suggested this free spray kudos man that works pretty good all right guys i think everyone will agree that none of these attacks were very practical you've been sending them in for more than a year i had to get it out of the way this thing is still frozen, man. Woo. Anyway, from negative 65 degrees Fahrenheit uh, all the way up to, uh, I don't even know, whatever the temperature is required to melt cast aluminum, everything inside of this thing melted. All that stuff you saw burning on the mulch was the liquid plastic that had just uh, was in the bottom of the lock. When it fell out, all this stuff just gushed out and just kept burning. Nasty, nasty. But you know what? I can't think of a better lock for, you know, six and a half or seven dollars to lock up your kid's uh, gym locker or school locker. Probably not going to find a better lock than this little master lock speed dial. I'm not usually one to pump up master lock, but in this, in, in this case, I think they've done an excellent job for the money of giving us a good uh, lock for low security applications. All right, I can't give away all this melted and frozen stuff, so instead... What I'm going to do, if you'll go to that website, in the middle of the page, big purple band, click it. It says Weekend Giveaway on it. Click it and register. And with a little bit of luck, next weekend, my webmaster will draw your name to win a Lock Lab t-shirt and a brand new Praxis kit from UK Pump Keys. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe. Stay legal. If you like what Lock Labs do, you can really help me out by subscribing, hitting the like button, and of course sharing it on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks, guys. Yeah.